This class is concerned with McClellan's human motivation theory. McClellan proposed a theory to explain human motivation. He was particularly interested in trying to explain why people are motivated in the way they are at work. Why do people want to work? Uh, what is it that drives them when they're at work? What is it that makes them engaged in, in their working practices? Or what is it that alienates them from work or uh, causes them anxiety at work or, or the desire to leave, indeed, their current employment? So what is it that uh, influences motivation at work? And that was his, his central theme. That's what he was concerned with in this particular exercise. According to him, there are three motivators, three key motivators that determine employee motivation and success. So there are three parts we need to be familiar with. First of all, there is the, the need for achievement. People like to think they're achieving something at work. That motivates them. Uh, they, they may feel that they're being recognized, they're achieving something, they're being recognized by their colleagues and by their families and uh, by the management. They, they feel a part of what they're doing and they're motivated as a consequence. They also feel the need to be wanted, to, to feel a part of the organization, to be affiliated with the organization, to be seen as a part of its structure and its success. And some of them have a need for power, some of them wish to have promotion. They need to be in control of what they're doing and uh, they need to have more say in their working lives so that they have a need for power. So according to McClelland these are three very basic motivators for people at work. The need for achievement, the need for affiliation and the need for power. And we're going to look at these in a little more detail in the rest of this video. <clears throat> he suggested that the needs are developed through uh, an individual's age, culture, background, education and life experience. So where we get the, the three needs, um, achievement, affiliation and power, where we get those will be in part related to some other aspect of our lives, our, our age or our culture, our background, our education our life experiences. So we're bringing something else to bear. Something is within us which makes us want achievement or affiliation or power. So these are the background influences. In other words, not in order words, but in other words, these needs are learned uh, through social interaction rather than inherited. So the three needs that we were looking at, achievement, affiliation and power, these are, these come through us through social interaction. They're not inherited. They're not something we receive from our parents or our grandparents. All individuals acquire the three needs. However, only one is most dominant. So all the individuals according to this view have all individuals have these three needs uh, achievement affiliation and power but only one of them will be dominant only one of them will show through perhaps it's, it's a question of our capacity to develop two maybe too much for us so we, we develop one of them Managers are able to effectively motivate their employees if they can identify which need is most dominant in each individual. So if managers can work out what sort of individuals they are, do, do, the, do the employees want friendship and recognition within the organization? Do they want to be affiliated with the organization? Do they want to be seen as a part of the organization? Because if, they, if that is the, the prime motivator, then managers can, can build on that. Or perhaps some people want power. They want to be promoted. They want to have more say in what they're doing and be able to control their 
immediate environment. Again, managers can, if they can work out which of the three needs uh, dominate each individual, they're able to work out how to effectively manage that person. So managers can develop tasks which can enhance an employee's motivation to success. If the manager is able to work out what sort of person they are, if it's affiliation or achievement, they want to achieve something, uh, maybe it's power as I said earlier, but if the manager can work it out they can they can develop tasks and work routines which play to that need and which will in turn motivate that individual more so that they're, they become more effective workers. Let's look at the need for achievement. Individuals who acquire this need like to take on calculated risks in order to excel and achieve their goals. So these are individuals who want to achieve. They, they want to uh, set themselves targets and objectives and they want to go after these. They want to uh, demonstrate that they, have, they can achieve what they set out to achieve. So the individuals set themselves targets which are achievable but perhaps may be difficult but they themselves calculate the risks of, of failure and then once they've set the targets they go out to achieve them. They set themselves goals that are challenging, exciting but are also realistic. They must be capable of achievement. There's no point in setting goals that can't be achieved. There's no point in setting the goal that uh, I will walk on Mars because it's not achievable. So they must set realistic goals. So uh, an employee may set the, the, the target of producing so many items in a week or completing a report within a specified time period. And when he or she completes the report or achieves a certain production level or whatever it is, they feel a sense of achievement. They've done it and that's what motivated them. It's the, the sense of achievement, the sense that they have done a good job and they feel good about it. They like to, generally speaking, work alone or with other achievers. They don't like to work with anybody. They like to either work alone, set themselves their own targets and get on with it, or alternatively to work with others who are similar minded to them, people who set themselves targets as well and and sometimes that can lead to competition. Sometimes that's good or sometimes it can become uh, a little difficult to manage because the rivalry may become too intense. But generally speaking these individuals don't like to work with anybody. They, like, they don't like to work with workers who are complacent and easygoing. They like to work with colleagues who are out to achieve something as well. So they're similar minded. Achievers need regular feedback uh, as this is the only means by which they can assess their progress. So when when workers set themselves targets that they want to achieve, they like to have feedback, they like to be told how well they're doing or uh, how far short of achieving the overall target they are and this inspires them, inspires them to get on with it, to to work harder or to, to try harder. They like to know where they are at any one moment in relationship to the target they've set. How far off are they? Money is a type of motivator as it allows achievers to analyze their success. So sometimes when workers set themselves targets or goals that they want to achieve and management recognise it and recognise them as good workers they may be given bonuses. Well they see the bonus as uh, a recognition of what they have been doing and, and of their achievements. So the bonus is 
evidence to them that they are good achievers. They don't need to be constantly praised in order to keep them motivated. Uh, this type of worker has it in his or her head. They are self-motivated to a large extent. They want to achieve. It's, it's part of them. They, they like the idea of a challenge. They like the idea of setting themselves a goal and going out to try to achieve it. They don't need to be progressed or watched. They do it themselves. They simply get on with it. So they don't need a lot of supervision. Now the need for affiliation. Well, this type of need, individuals are more concerned about being liked and accepted. They want to be liked by the management. They want to be liked by their colleagues. They want to be accepted. They have a need to be wanted. Uh, the form informal relationships within the organisation. They, they talk to each other and uh, they want to know each other and they want to it's a community to them they, they want to be able to share their problems and talk about what's gone right and what's wrong not just within the workforce but uh, within the working environment I should say but also what's happening to them in their own personal lives what's happening in the community so they're forming informal relationships that are in a sense support for them as individuals but they want to be part of the organization they want to be accepted within the organization they like to work in a team and they like cooperative environments working in teams there are all sorts of support mechanisms and people they share something in common with the achievement of the objectives of the team so they like to uh, speak to their colleagues and talk to their colleagues and sometimes the conversations drift away from perhaps from work the immediate concern and and ask about each other's health and what they did recently and have they seen a certain thing on television and that's not wasting time that's that's a part of this affiliation requirement that they have got they need to be accepted by the management they need to be accepted by the company they need to be valued by the company. They have this need. But they also need to be valued by their colleagues and they need to share widely. It's a part of their life and they want to share it. They're very good in customer service environments or as team players. Uh, they like dealing with people. They like, they like trying to understand people and solving problems for people and being helpful. Now the need for power, well this type of need is associated with individuals who like to take control and lead others. They can become argumentative and have the ability to influence people. These are quite strong personalities. They, if they don't get their way, if, they don't, if people don't agree with them, they may be argumentative. They may want to dispute situations and uh, they may want to call meetings or uh, demonstrate why they're right or why others are wrong. They, they have a, a need to promote themselves, they have a need to push themselves forward and they believe that their views are correct and any alternative views are in a sense wrong. They have the best view and they have a need to control their environment, they have a need to have power to to be seen to have that status they're suited in leadership roles as they like to be dominating and competitive there is a problem about having them in leadership however and that is they may not uh, inspire team teamwork they may not inspire others to follow them they may prefer to force people to follow them. They have a need for power, they believe they're right and everyone else should follow them. And perhaps good leadership requires a more cooperative approach and taking 
the workers with them rather than forcing the workers to be with them. But nonetheless, some people have this need for power. Some people have the need to have control over their environment and to uh, get others to agree with them. In order for managers to help motivate individuals, they must give appropriate uh, tasks suited to each individual and their needs. So it's imperative that management understand the workforce and understand the type of person they're dealing with and thereby give them tasks that ideally suit them and suit their personality types. See what, what it is what sort of needs they've got. Are they achievers? Are they looking for power? Are they uh, want to be do they want to be liked by the organization as well? So managers need to try and figure this out and in that way they can more effectively deploy their workforce and the workforce will be happier as well as a consequence. High achievers um, challenging but realistic tasks, constant constructive feedback, opportunities to work alone or with other achievers. So it's, a, it's important for the management to try and work out what sort of people they are. Give them realistic tasks, give them constructive feedback and give them the opportunities to work alone or to work with others if they wish to do so. Of course, all of this is dependent on whether this is practical within the workplace. We're assuming here that uh, the workplace is of a scale that enables management to be able to have this flexibility. High affiliation, well, best working in groups, in formal environments, uh, personal feedback, manageable tasks. So to have affiliation with the organization it's best these type of people like to affiliate they like to mix with others so they like to be working groups they like to have informal environments if possible they like to have personal feedback um, and they like to have their tasks that are manageable they can they can achieve it quite easily within their capacity for power well as leadership role direct feedback goal oriented tasks. And that's all we're going to deal with in this session. So we're going to leave it at that and say those were some of the insights into McClellan's uh, motivation theory. So thank you for watching.